And they're, they're broken. You can't use them. You can't do it. Now, speaking of hands, hands up if you think Australia has too many laws, too many rules, too many regulations. Well, the PM agrees with you and wants to get rid of thousands of them all at once. As the wheels of government turn, it's only natural that some laws outlive their usefulness. For instance, in France, by the letter of the law, it's a criminal act to name a pig Napoleon. In Sydney, taxis are still legally obligated to carry a bale of hay in the boot. And in Victoria, in 2014, it's still officially illegal to wear hot pink pants after midday on Sunday. What? It's Monday. Today, the Abbott government announced its plans to deal with a bunch of old, redundant laws. It's called a repeal day. It's scheduled for March and they've targeted more than 8,000 bits of legislation to be abolished in one sitting. The largest single reduction of federal law in our nation's history. This process is common in the United States. It's useful because it allows you to update your legislation and to remove any replication um, that might exist within the laws. However, the PM's probably not interested in winding back the controversial hot pink pants legislation. His goal is to deliver on an election promise to slash red and green tape and save big business around one billion dollars a year. Any reduction of red tape is really going to uh, increase economic activity and that's going to be a plus for jobs and a plus for the populace as a whole. Some of it definitely makes good sense, like reducing the amount of time scientists need to spend on grant applications and admin so they can devote those valuable hours to lab work searching for cures. But as Fergal says, less regulation also means fewer checks and balances for big business. I certainly have some concerns as to how effectively Parliament can operate when it's asked to do that much work in one day. Well, the man charged with sweeping the legal broom is Liberal MP Josh Frydenberg. Josh, why, why do we need this to happen? Oh, look, Carrie, it's a great opportunity to get rid of unnecessary, inefficient and ineffective regulation. Uh, and that's going to lift the burden on small business and also the not-for-profit sector. Uh, it's also a good time to do a bit of spring cleaning because you've got a situation, for example, where there's World War II type uh, regulations that are still on the books that specify interest uh, on uh, housing being paid in pounds and shillings, you know, and that's still on the statute book so we'll be using the opportunity of repeal day to get rid of a whole lot of redundant uh, regulations as well as deal dealing with some of the current day ones which are stifling uh, small business and the not-for-profit sector. Josh presumably you're not doing this for the heck of it spell it out how many public service jobs will this cut and how much <laughs> money will this save the taxpayer? Well it's going to save the taxpayer money because if you can lower the costs of business then that can be passed through to consumers and ultimately to families. But it's about getting the balance right, Steve, and uh, some regulation is good because it sets the rules of the game. But we've seen too much regulation in Australia at all layers of government. And one of the things we really want to do is avoid the duplication between federal and state governments because too often uh, companies are being asked to tick the box twice and they don't need to do that. Josh, by repealing 8,000 laws and regulations at once, aren't you making it quite difficult for anyone to understand the, the repercussions of such a big change? Look, uh, all that uh, regulations that we'll be repealing will be debated in, in the Parliament. Um, I'm hoping that the, the Labor Party uh, gives us bipartisan support on this because ultimately it's in the interests of uh, the Australian people that we do reduce red tape. All governments, mind you, Labor and Liberal, have promised to do something in this space. But too often than not, they haven't walked the talk and we want to do that. Uh, and it's also important, uh, Pete, to note that it's the not-for-profit sector as well. So if we can reduce the amount of regulation, we can free up the not-for-profit sector, the education sector, our scientists and our researchers to do what they do best. Hey Josh, what was the problem? Why did they bring in the law about wearing hot pink pants on a Sunday after uh, midday? <laughs> I haven't been aware of that one, but uh, that does sound a bit of a bit too much of a nanny state if there's <laughs> you can't wear the if you can't wear the hot pink pants carry on a Sunday. Really, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've got to say, Josh, I defend to the death <laughs> your right to wear hot pink pants on a Sunday afternoon and high heels with that as well. Mate. <laughs> Thanks for your time tonight, Josh. Great to be with you guys. It's interesting. One man's, one man's cutting green tape is another man's environmental regulation. And, and we just had a, a case in West Virginia in the States where they cut environmental regulations to help business. 
and as a result there was a contamination of a water source. 300,000 people no longer have drinking water or can even take a shower. Mm. So when you're going through and cutting rules, by all means free it up, but at the same time you do have to protect the environment while you're there. Yeah, it's a real balance. Time to see what else is making